Hey, hey, what up? What's good? What's hot? What's happening? Welcome to another hot episode of Pop Radio. Of course, my name is Miss Cosmo, and I'm joined by my homie. Bucci. What's going on? What's going on, beautiful people? What's going on, Miss uh-huh. Cosmo? I see you got your drip right today. Oh, oh, we're not playing around today. Uh-huh. We're not playing around today. We got to gotta come through ambassador style. Okay. It was a proper request. This again, see, learn how to clap your head to toe. Yes, you yes, know. Yes, I decided to switch up the colors just a little bit and make Corporate. sure. Corporate. Yeah. See, this is this is a business Cosmo. You're playing at a. Uh, she's playing later today at an yeah. insurance yeah. Uh, after party. Uh, end of year. <laughs> end of year. <laughs> <laughs> me as for me, I don't know. Uh, either way, you're, maybe are you going to a wedding? <laughs> it's wedding season now, also. Yeah, uh, no, I'm going to a wedding. Uh? This is gonna be my same outfit all wedding season, all December. Really? So it looks like all the weddings happen in one day. <laughs> when I post the pictures. Just to, just to say, you know, you were the guy to invite to all the weddings. Absolutely. But of course, the reason we're all out here dressed to the nines is because of our homie Maglera Doughboy coming out of Clegg's Dop. What's up? What's <laughs> going on, my G? What's going on? How you feeling? How are you doing? I didn't do it too much. I can not stay. So Maglera fails to mention that it's actually his request. Mm-hmm. That we got oh, no. all nice and pretty today. <laughs> oh no, I just I just thought, you know, it would be nice. Uh, I asked for a cup of tea. <laughs> 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 but it also goes to show that we listen when you request. Because you remember at Back to the City when we did Popcast Goes 2, you had a, a very specific request. You said, please, can we just wear suits? Can we look nice? Please, and you guys look... Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Fantastic, man. But I mean, you're having a good time right now. You know what I'm sure. saying? Um, long time waiting. The album is out. Both albums are out, not just sure. your own, but sure. your collaborative projects with both Slick. Sure. And well, every, the music is being consumed and loved a lot. But um, let's go back a little bit now, because I remember our first introduction to Maglera Dobo, at least my first introduction uh, uh, of you coming into the game was, of course, with Kuli Chana. For sure. What was your relationship like with him right at the beginning there when you first met him? Did you approach him? Did he approach you? Did he utile music at how? Did he hit you up? Actually, a mutual friend <coughs> and uh, also a Matlera dude. Uh, his name is Apu, Apu Sibekedi. Uh, we also started the sound together. Or I can say we branded the sound together. You know, yeah. I always used to say I'm a Motokolista, but we called it Strata before anyone else in this country even spoke the Strata thing. And I say that with love. Mm, both Strata. Yeah, ah, those are the boys. Those are the uh-huh. boys. I'm just saying now that I see that word a lot, we need to understand what Context. the focal point always was with Strata. And it was, this is what's happening with Strata. Yeah. And that is also a part of that. I love it. And just like Montuaco, no one needs an invite. You know, can't say, hey, you can join Strata. Or no, it's there. But um, Apu uh, was working on One Source with Cooley. He was producing most of the album. And he was like, yo, there's a song that Cooley wants to do with Snoop Dogg, actually. You know, and I was like, but I feel like just yeah go crazy so yeah. i put like four verses on one song you yeah know, after coolie's verse and i was like this guy doesn't have a choice he's gonna, <laughs> like, <laughs> at some point he's gonna hear me yeah and then he was just like yo what do you want to do and i was like i want to be my own boss he was like all right stay next to me let me teach you but also let's do business and the rest is history that's so dope man and i think also um what what what's dope is that you guys are both obviously from like small towns trying to make yeah. it in the in the in the big industry, and uh, coming from a place like Maglera and you going back, you know, um, you've dropped the album now. Obviously, there's a lot more um, noise around your name sure. compared to when you first started out. Compared to when you first started working out or working with Cooley, how are you feeling about the reception and the people back home? Have you been home? Um, I was at home, but in person, just performing. I haven't really settled in, but also I haven't been home because of what's happening at home, you know? There's yeah. there's AKs at home now. There's more. All the stuff I predicted in my old interviews and my music is happening now, and it's not a good time for the most popular guy to go, mm. popular guy at home to go, you know? Just is elaborate on that a little bit, if you don't mind. I used to be in street culture. Some yeah. of the people involved in the stuff are my friends. Some yeah. of the people involved in the stuff are people who don't like me. You know, some, right. of this, some of these people are people who grew up with me. So, yeah, if I am going home, it's not to take it in like that. Nipsey Hussle tried. You saw what happened. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. 
And that's very interesting that you're saying that because I know off air right now, um, I mean, we're shooting this video, uh, this podcast, fresh off the news of what happened all the way in America yeah. with uh, our takeoff. And that brought us to the conversation locally about um, uh, hoods that pe- are coming from the hoods and yeah. ha- going back to the hood is very is very tricky. And so if you're especially not just because you grew up in the hood, but if you grew up uh, being a part of like street life, yes. street culture, and For maybe sure. even gang culture, you know what I'm saying? Sure. If you just grew up in neighborhoods like that and you were part of it, you were part of it. For so sure. when you gain some success and you leave, going back is not as easy as, oh, I gotta go back and depth the homies. I gotta always stay there. People know that I'm on the ground. Like you're saying, things change. There's animosity in the air. So going back is a little bit trickier. How do you manage the fact that you show love to your hood, but also you're like, I gotta also protect myself? I tell you, the last time I went and partied at home, dog, some guy came to my table. I used to drink a lot of JC LaRue at home. Yeah. Like high school, I would go into the club. And this is when we were like selling drugs outside the club. Because yeah. we were minors, so they wouldn't let us in the club. But I had people who I knew would go and give me like two JC LaRue's. Then we're just in the car, you know, you know, like uh, paid in full, yeah. Yeah. like how the boys are always in the car. People come greet, they take yeah. what they want, and they bounce. That was us, but we're in the back seat. The OGs were in the front. So these people remember me from that come up, and this guy's like, "Yo, can I get in there? You know, I'm told here, JC, I can't manage to go back in the blade. I'm not referring to fail. I'm a 29 year old. I'm a rascal. I was wild. I'm told. But in that moment, I think it was one of the craziest nights I had at home since uh, my bar dropped. Which has been crazy, yeah. you know, and it was like that was the realest moments. There's been moments at the club where gangsters will show people their guns and say, "Hey, bodega's here, play bodega the whole night." <laughs> and this guy's playing bodega like ya quieto, ya house. He doesn't have a choice. You know, <laughs> just mix that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, can. you know, and saying with great power comes great responsibility, which is also not being around them so much that beat the bar. Yeah. You know, right. everyone at home appreciates me because I'm not outside too much, including the gangsters. You know, when I see them. Um, some of these niggas raised us, bro. After school, some of these yeah. niggas would fetch us after school and say, what you doing today? And then they steal cars. And like, I don't know what's up with you. Can't be broke at school. You know? Some of them would say, that's my boy. He's a rapper also. This bump is shit. While they're doing their crime. Yeah. You know, which is why the music is so much a soundtrack yeah. of the lifestyle. Also, niggas call me down a lot, man. The dudes at home have all told me, yo, don't be a gangster. I saw you tweet, uh, sorry, uh, I saw you tweet just staying with the same topic, uh, speaking about the crime that you're in, and I know you're putting it out, you're like, <laughs> yo, I was somewhere earlier on, and I saw a phone right in front of my face, and I didn't steal it. No, 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 no I didn't, I took the phone, uh, oh. I just gave it back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, you, you're like, you know what, I'm actually not in that life anymore, I don't do this shit anymore, and that, I guess, is that like a moment where you realize, or, hey, kind of back in the day, this is how I used to be able to survive, because I was living this life. Also existing in a town like where we're from talk, you know uh i i never used to like stealing a lot of people stole from me i got robbed because i was selling drugs and people knew this kid makes money yeah you know niggas would watch me for like four hours it's like yeah ah, hard, man, not today <laughs> 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 and that's how you get the association with yeah. the dangerous people because i got tired you know right. and i was like ah, look, not vote, huh, no? you know yeah. then my name mama got this is tunia because it's billy so fellow and check and feel okay man but um from seeing the stuff that's happened around guns and just uh, uh, moments of thinking too quick or not thinking at all, I never liked violence, you know? But with the phone thing, back to that thing, we were at Nostra. Some guy pickpocketed me first. Right. At know? Nostra? Dog. Uh, I was so on. mad. <laughs> I was so mad. You can ask anyone who was there, dog. I was like, I'm OT. I left the hood. Aren't we in there? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this happening in the north of Germany? So in I'm lit, dog. I hear my phone. Yeah, it's on uh, Why did I say I hear my phone? Yeah. I'm too lit to respond quick because I'm lit. Yeah. So when I turn around, you know the lights. Pa, pa, pa. There's like four people behind me. The first guy, he saw a mad. Cringe. Ah, no, it's not me. <laughs> he points at that guy. So I go to that guy. I said, sure, Rotman. Pafuniak. Don't want to go there. Yeah. Pafuniak. Kain Saneski. Sharp and sharp. Just right. Come on, we had a vibe. <laughs> you know, but that is the character that, you know, I come from at home. The moral backbone of being able to look dudes in the face and say, everyone can be hard, bro. We don't need to be hard, you know. That's my cry also with the music. I, I fight with 25 a lot. I fight with Tato a lot. I fight with any of my friends who come from street culture to say, I always say on my Instagram, niggas is not in the hood. I'm going to rebrand it and say, we are not in the township. 
because South Africa was never a township. So we don't need to exist in that lifestyle, especially when we're out of it, you know? Yeah. Like push us that, you know, because you go Italy, you know? Yes, we're not. Yes, we're not. Shout out, I dig that. So, um, obviously talking about street culture, talking about your history, a lot of people in South Africa you'd find, or maybe not even in South Africa, maybe the rest of the world, outside of the States, um, seem to, you know, rap about things that they wish they had or things that they wish they were doing. And yeah. uh, in the States, it seems to be like a lifestyle because they're rapping about shooting guys and now yeah. we're losing people like Takeoff, which is not what we wanted. Yeah. Um, but th- some of those raps, your raps ring true. Yeah. As you mentioned, that it, it, it becomes a bit of a soundtrack now. Yes. It's a thing when people are listening and saying, oh man, he's actually living this life. Do you think your raps actually influence society for people to do stuff? Or are you just telling the story on how you got out of it? The responsibility of how you do that is the biggest one. You know, um, I feel like there was a time when I was learning how to do it. Where it was just blatant. Yo, this way we at. My mom got the gun right now. Come here, you get shot right now. You know, and at that time, it, there was no intention. It was really just expressing, you know, this is post my boys passing away. This is post all of that dark stuff we saw at home. And I think artists should be allowed to be humans to some extent like that, yeah. because also the art just comes out. You can't define it. But there is a point where it's like, yo, Matlera, you're better now. Why are you still, you know, like I get mad if like a T.I. is still saying, I shoot a nigga. T.I. And you'll still go do it, you know. And I speak to the boys a lot. I speak to the boys in the burbs who say, come on, dog, stop this thing. Off. I got the blade. What? It's two years of time when I was here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's real life, you know? Because what it will, That's true though. What it will create is a culture of lying kids yeah. who go buy a gun after to reiterate that lie. Yeah. Very dangerous, you know? Yeah. And, and young kids are impressionable anyway. It's not yeah. just kids. But guys, see. That's why diaspora is <laughs> such a palate cleanser. That's how I felt when I was, well, after all the spiritual stuff I've done and coming of age in an African sense and speaking to my family. I'm in such a great time, like in my life. You know, like yeah. I wake up and I feel like a person for the first time. And I feel like the township doesn't allow, allow a lot of people to feel because you're in the motion of the township so much from the, 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 the recreational usage, which is also something that I could tell people about back to back from selling to being a part of, you know, to to uh, the booze and and uh, just lifestyle. That's like, and that's why I am starting to dislike our association with thinking the township is our design. It's there, we made it fly. Yeah. I want to be proud of black people for that. Yeah. But we mustn't act like it wasn't a concentration camp yeah. and that's why we don't have trees in the hood yeah. so that they just around and they and can And we don't have roads. Ones. Yes, yeah. where well, we had it be dusty as Kasinga yeah. Tikata. It was like, ah, oh, it's fly. No, it's no, not. No, <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> it's just the truth. Yeah. But uh, g- uh, coming from a place where you're mentioning how you were uh, making ends meet, you know, being outside the club, selling what you needed to sell. Yeah, and that wasn't making ends meet, just to correct you. I hated being broke. Oh, okay. I it was think, a choice. I think poverty is demeaning to okay. character and standing up straight. And if your mother takes you to a school where there's Afrikaner who's calling you a kafir and Portuguese kids whose dads give them po- uh, Porsches to school, when or you got a civis cash, I'm going to go trap. Mm. <laughs> what are you talking about? We, I'm going to go trap. A hundred percent. So obviously coming from a life like that. Yes. Um, it's easy cash. Yes. So why get into music? Because everybody knows music is a struggle when it comes to actually getting the coins. Music made me popular at home. I, I got arrested and after I recorded and I would send everyone at school's music and be like, yeah, it's real life. Feel like I was getting sassy people more better than Bluetooth because he's the most popular. After I can't go away and I was going to miss his party because girl. Went all. By the time I was going to go, I was going to go to the transport and music work. And that was fun. I liked yeah. that. Made me feel like a real person. I made music since I was 10. The Giselle brothers took us to the studio. We're rapping on Joop Joop's beats. I have those songs here, actually. Can I play them on <laughs> the th- mic? I think you can actually play, play us a song. You can play us a song. I'm saying you're playing on Joop Joop's beats like <laughs> <laughs> uh, Around that time. Yeah. Really? Says, says, uh, uh, I want to hear This it. is actually a real life NFT. I thought I was going to save it. <laughs> yeah, let me play it. How old is this? When did you record it? Uh, 2006. Jeez. I was, in, I was 12 years old. So the Giselle brothers, their little brother, his name is Linda, big friend of mine, you know, still to this day. And my late best friend, Z, uh, his name is uh, Kadis Poyano. He passed away like four years ago with the rest of the crew. Um, so they heard us rapping. 
And, they, and, and Linda was like, yo, man, I want you to take me and my friends to the studio. I think. I don't know what happened. But hey, when I, pow, we, yeah, when we're rapping on Goofy's beats. They're playing us Jube Jube's album. I'm like, I am biting some flows here. Yeah. You know? But what you're going to hear here, I'm not going to play the whole song. I'm just going to go to my verse. <laughs> and what you guys will also hear is that, yeah, has yeah. been there. That's yeah. how I, I only started the songs. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it plays properly on this man. I think I'm still connected to my pod. <laughs> so we used to call ourselves all G's, all OG. gangsters. Yeah. <laughs> and the Giselle brothers made sure we remember to be South African <laughs> and musical. Yes. This is why you're hearing this. Shout out. <laughs> Okay, nah, keep the chorus. I don't like that chorus. I want my verse. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's me. You hear that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> oh, shit. This is crazy to even hear on camera because I haven't bumped him since my boy was like, yo, I got those songs. Okay, now Steve Jobs is fighting with you guys. Is it reconnecting to the Bluetooth? No, 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 no. But you can hear the youthness in the yeah. voice. And you say that you can hear his twelve-year-old boys versus now that your voice is broken, you're a that grown man. That time Rahul so got to rub on that too bad loon. Nah, hey man, what's all that twisting at? I'm pulling back. My voice might have been breaking here. No, that's Linda. Yo, hello, new. My girl just pop. Nah, don't plug it in. I want it to be like this, so it's real life. And let that clip stay in with that guy said that also. Yeah, that's me right here. Can you <laughs> and even that, I'm 12 years old, I'm saying you better get your Beretta. You yeah. need to ask yourself, what was this kid around, you know? Yeah. My uncle is a police officer, my other uncle is a soldier. I'm listening to 50 Cent and I'm listening to uh, Kumshev. I'm listening to, what's that other crew that said... It's, it's, it's wonderful. H2O. Oh, H2O, yeah. Yes, and that's why you hear the Zulu Nyana. The, what's you your know? mother saying while you're going through all of this? What, yeah, at what's this the family age? situation like? My mother's at work, though. She has no time to hear the stuff. But outside of not hearing the music, maybe even just your life, the things you're doing, the people you're hanging out with. Where does a mother in the township have time to know this stuff is happening to her kids when she has two jobs day to day in South Africa? I get that. W- were you an only child? No. A big family. The boys slept on the floor. The women slept on the beds. We slept in army, army bags. What was the family situation like in terms of how you guys got along? Beautiful family. Beautiful. When, they, when I got arrested, everyone was hurt. But to yeah. kill. <gasps> like, but we broke. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a PS, I got a PlayStation 1 now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you play. take money home and be like, I said I was rapping at school. <laughs> But of course, you know, the, the, the music kind of transcended a little bit more and got you out of the space yes. where you were looking back now and you're looking at that. Doesn't that feel like a lifetime ago? Because you're, you're living a completely different life now. It does, bro. It's like I, I have the coolest trap stories ever. Every time I remember, because some of them are in the back of my mind because that's what trauma does. But I was telling... I was telling dudes about this one time when Cooley came home and I had like a lot of weed, not like dope, but it was like, I was getting it from like my friends I used to sell drugs for. So it's like, I have a rule with them at home. Anything that I used to offer as a service for you guys, I can't pay for now, you know? Not safety, yeah. not marijuana, you know? Not anything at the club because also those clubs know how much our popularity brought business to their clubs when they had minors drinking. So... Fast forward, Cooley walks into studio, and I got like, yo, dog, we had weed, dog, like bags, like, like, yeah, msamu, kuak, until, msamu, until, and he laughed it off, but I, I could see that, 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 that town dude, who's like, yo, did you wait, it's at this thing. Yeah. But after he was like, and that, that conversation didn't happen, same time as when he saw all the dope, 
Because that day he lost it off. He was just like, how much do you make? Blah, blah, blah. And this is fresh off of us becoming friends. Right. You know, and I'm still popping in and out of, I'm rapping. I'm on magazines. Yeah, we shoot videos. My YouTube isn't doing so bad. But it's like, yo, I can make 2K in like one transaction, yeah. depending on who's copying. You know, a couple of those. That's, yeah, I'm fine. Let's go back to the hood. That's popping. Yeah. Right? And he was like, yo, the, what if I just EY you once in a while? Eh? Mm. Just hit you with an EY wallet here and there. You know, to yeah, he was it. trying to get you out. Yeah, 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 he, That's so commendable. He did what Young Thug did to Lil Baby, just yeah. not so direct, you know? He was like, ah, Thug, nah. Just come be a rapper for real. Stop that thing. A hundred percent. And obviously you took that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice also. Cool, cool introduced me to who I could be, HD. The first bottle of Moe I saw, I tried to put it in the class. I don't know it's one. RD4 that didn't soak a Mubaki thing. No, I didn't so. <laughs> <laughs> Rap life. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the head. Yeah. He said, stop smoking cigarettes, smoke a cigar. Nice. Or you need to wear a suit first, then you'll understand. You know, and that's how we got here. And that's, this was a chat like four years ago. It's like, just say a suit, then a cigar, then you're done with them. I was like, I right, say less. But I can't wear one suit. Let me back to back it, hey? So I'm not borrowing and whatnot. Because me yeah. also, I don't like that thing of fake it till you make it. Yeah. I'm from Matlera. Niggas will be like, hey, Joe, I don't get Niggas call you concerned. What's happening with the swag, bro? You're representing hometown. It's backbone, you know. Home gave me a lot of backbone. I love it. When it comes to uh, your collaborations, uh, there's some people that kind of you keep around. Yeah. And of course, you've been creating music with. You know what I'm saying? Uh, When we did speak briefly on Popcast, we did mention that. Um, or even at the top of this one, do you dropped two projects now? Yeah, with uh, Slick and Twenty Five K. Yeah, that's our joint property, Champion Music. Um, what when did that relationship actually solidify for you enough to be like, okay, let's actually not just make music together, but albums? When Slick put me in Twenty Five in one room, and I was like, yeah, and I recovered really too. Maybe let's try to heal those boys together. You know. I was like, let's fight. And was he the one who saw it? Like, I want to put you guys in the same yeah. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slick was like, hey, Joe. You're in 25. Here your phone. He he inja to give my bigger speed. Show up work. You are on camera and on the mic. Don't talk crazy. What you say? Okay. Hey, what's I up, Slick? Yeah. What's up, my boy? What are these days? We're working here. Well, Rafael has cash. Eh, bofa wa ne da un regular limit. But yeah, these are my friends, man, you know, and that's, I believe in that so much because it's like, understand how much energy translates real life off of who you exist with, especially in this industry where if someone is a douche at the club, is a douche day to day, even if they have a hit song, even if, you know, it's, it's nice capitalizing off the cloud, when that boat sinks, that's why you sink with it, yeah. you know, and I think that's also a crazy one in the game. If you ask me why... I've picked who I've picked. I've picked people who I feel like are not riding the wave, you know? If the boat leaks a bit, one of them will be like, hey, let us not find, let's just patch this thing up so he doesn't sink, you know? Being true to ourselves, that's who we are, is key to really himself. Slick is really himself. And I'm not saying other dudes aren't, but like my moral compass has a few attracted to the people you see around me. All right, so um, champion music, Two, obviously now is I think it's coming through and you guys have a lot more features on the album you guys are working with a lot of artists as well how did you particularly decide to work with these people because as you're saying it's a joint project so you guys all kind of sat down and said we're gonna make this album be what hip-hop needs to be in South Africa for sure I think Slick is the most intentional in terms of first Sonic you know mm. you say boys we started here but the way me and 25 come in in terms of curation is really just approach you know once i hear the beat like for example vision um we did vision because slick played me that song and that verse that whole verse and chorus was supposed to be a song of mine but i was like this feels like what i need to say for the northwest on this project you know and then slick was like okay what else do you hear and i was like blackie verse two we have to because of the ooh, and that's big list singing but i was like come on Doug, if this wasn't our song this should have been a blackie song yeah went on and it's just about making that decision together and even sometimes saying, hey, this is not my moment. Let me be lost verse or not, let me not be on it at all. You know, there's a lot of just deciding. We curate the moments. I only say to Slick, we are in pop culture, which is popular culture. We need to curate what we're going to make popular. So, so Slick will understand how to make people dance. But in terms of speaking, 
that's where I come in. I'm like, I want us to speak to the people. And in terms of like, just saying to niggas, you might get blicked. Don't fuck around. That's kilo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kilo's also got like his own like. Uh, trap stories that I'm sure you guys kind of had to share, yeah. you know, especially just sitting and hanging out and realizing similarities and how you guys have grown up and, and people that you've possibly hung out with, not necessarily getting involved in certain things, but um, uh, how did you guys even share that so that you guys can say, okay, in this song, maybe you talk about that type and I'm going to speak about this. We just do it. Yeah. I can say, hey, Joe, I want to work like a mama with a mama. Yeah. Maybe let me talk about the clothes and the girls. Yeah. yeah. So we're not both. <laughs> but also, um, from the first time I met 25, that was an unspoken conversation to say we know each other, we don't have two. We understand each other. No one needs to put up that thing. Oh, I'm harder, I'm harder. No. 25 comes from the crime capital of Pretoria, you know? Um, and also, 25 comes from. I, I always say to him, Pretoria has more expensive crime, which is more dangerous because there's bigger guns. There's, we only have AKs in Madlera now. Oh, hectic. Yes, but I did say we're getting AK-47s. You're yeah. like, ah, no, Madlera, you're thinking too much. No, no, big killer was there. Hey, yo. <laughs> That's tricky now. <laughs> yeah, it's, tricky. it's tricky. But uh, if we're talking intention between me and 25, whether it be lifestyle, music, or what we want to represent, you know, there's been times where I'll post something and he'll call, like, I talk. Don't do that. Yeah. It's going to rock you, you know? In terms of tours, I know you're speaking just off uh, uh, camera as well, saying you're planning some tours. Yeah, we're about to do the champion music tour. Where are you looking forward to touching in this country where you haven't touched before? Where, where are you looking to explore your, your fan base? Uh, and what place has shocked you in the past where you landed? Oh, okay. But it's my girl like this over here. Cape Town definitely shocked me like four weeks ago, uh, five weeks ago, Deco, while I was doing this thing. And my mother's half tosser. So I'm down for like, you know, La Cosa Nostra. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. well, hearing them word for word it is crazy. Really? Mm. Like me pa. Yes. Cosa kids. La we, eh chap, la we, yeah me pa. You can't cap that one. Yeah. La we, yeah me pa, sap sahar. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hip hop at the end of the day it's yes. transcending it's, it's traveling through yes. and people are connecting with you and that's what the music is about it's about connecting different people who have um, you know a similar love and uh, for the culture and you know for sure the music is basically bringing it all together um, and I saw recently you were also posting about how it was your first time leaving South Africa yeah, no, and no, I was in Botswana yeah, and you were in Botswana um, how was that experience for you because I know a lot of people who possibly don't even have stories like that where they've never even been to the beach, let alone leaving the country. So for you, how was that kind of experience for you to kind of take it and be like, I want more? Shut up, Botswana. It was fly, time. man. Because <laughs> also, because also we S- Sipo's also been from, he, according to Sipo, he's from every country in Sadek because he's half That's Zambian, right. he's from Mafika, he's Zulu, he's also got some Botswana, so we don't know. Botswana's anymore. my second home, man. <laughs> Shout out to it. You're in Khaburun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gap, yeah city, I can see in your eyes. Aye, yeah. <laughs> no, Sipo's a liar. That's what he is. <laughs> a liar? No, no, no. no I, I can I, see you probably go city boy when you're in multi- Botswana. Multi- ca- multicultural. <laughs> okay, like one. But uh, if we are chatting about parts and the trip, the trip was beautiful. Um, I was actually excited. I was like, I can't wait to talk about it on a platform because traveling in these countries in the Southern Hemisphere always reminds me, or just traveling in, in South Africa, actually, let me say that, right, has always reminded me why it's worth it in terms of subject matter. It's like these lands need to be ours again. You know, we need to own this thing. We need to understand our purity. We need to be outside more because and if you're born in the you can appreciate I never understand the why you're born in So, so we're driving, and we're talking about what you watch this, obviously. I'm just thinking about what you watch this. And then, boom, border, what, what, obviously, you can see it. You can see it. First thing I saw was an elephant. Inshallah. Yeah. I'm in Africa. 100%. You know, because it's so easy to not feel like you're in Africa in South Africa. I don't know if you understand that. Yeah. It's so easy to feel like you're not in Africa because we're so used to the culture here. Yeah, but the city life as well. Yes, yeah. you know. And and I was even thinking about it coming here. I was like, inner city life really takes away so much from African kids. Mm. And the township does too. So I enjoyed that. And if I'm going to Sipo's question about what places can I wait to see, all of it, bro. Yeah. The trenches, bro. I remember this one day with my road manager. We did five shows uptown, uptown, uptown. Then the last two, tr- 
trench. It's bad sound. Yeah. There's a guy with no legs on stage doing push ups. Yes. I was like, yo, we outside. <laughs> <laughs> and you go there and people appreciate you. They're like, oh, they're yeah. so happy to see you. That's why I go the hardest. You came in touch. Because uh, people usually don't go to certain places. At some point, yeah. that's where I go the hardest. Yeah. That's why I might do some new music. Yeah. That's why I might blow them and say, hey, man, I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry,
Nah, absolutely. I love it, man. I think I'm very excited to see what the next chapter of your music is going to be like. Because leading up, a lot of people were talking about mcleod has been around for a long time. We want his project, and we heard him on other projects. Yeah. Now seeing Diaspora, I think I'm excited to see what, uh, what, what, what your next plan will be in terms of like solo projects and where you're going to take it, we especially a, on this continent, we, man. We got a couple. I'm giving you guys a little... Uh, yeah? Uh, what do you call it? Yeah. A Scooby snack. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's hear I, I think I'm about to leak two more now. Okay. Like now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you going to give it to us? Uh, maybe. We'll see. Mm. <laughs> I just gave you guys the secret. <laughs> 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 okay. All right, cool. No, uh, you know what? Um, one thing I also just love about you, and I think I think uh, people also just need to understand, over and above him asking us to wear the suits and he's saying, you know, he's Italiano now. Typically in hip hop, everybody does the baggy pants, you know, the sneakers, the vibe. When you say you want to do the grown grown man swag vibe, yeah. why particularly for you is that more important for your image? It's not even for me. I just want black people to feel like this, man. Mm. This album was inspired by looking at pictures of Sophia Town, and I was seeing black people in halls, dog lit, dancing. It's like these people don't have stress. It's untrue. And where I'm at right now, um, I, I love how I come from like an old school town. And when I say old school, I mean like it's still a little bit in its bubble. So the slang, that's why it's still so old school, you know. And I was like, I love this. People don't understand. This is a fountain of, of youth somewhat. And it's like if black people went back in time more and saw our greatest moments, then we wouldn't exist in like toxicity so much and feeling good is the first part of it i was like come on if we dress up every day do you have a reason to really be on crack bro i like that mm. i like that <laughs> nah man i think um locally right now i think uh, it's, it's, it's a better time for south african hip-hop i think after the last three years of people o- constantly bashing hip-hop Even against that, piano. Bro, i want to go to that right yeah we are a people of dance music yeah sure there was quite in house that was our hip hop when those things coexisted, At the, and and Bob, Bob my band and them were trying to like really say hip hop, but it's like we already had it. Maybe it's a quiet mm. one tall, and not the quiet that was like just BPM. I mean, like where there was rhythm and poetry, which is what rap is, right? Mm, Halloween, TKZ, yeah, that's some leaf. That was a hip hop album. hundred percent. Like, there's so many bars there, yeah. you know. Um, fast forward to every time there's an era where the dance music comes up. We need to stop being children about the fact that it's doing that. There was a gom and then Kara Kara came through. Absolutely. Yeah. You understand? Now there's piano, but we're coming through. We need to stop putting those things. It's like, no, there's always going to be yellow boon only one woman to game. Yeah. Yeah. Why call I yellow boon not? Yo, the, the, the dark skin girls are angry, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We can all coexist at the yes, end of the day, sir. you know? And the piano boys are my friends. Last week, boy Biza came with like 11 people. I was like, yeah, these people really do it. <laughs> <laughs> 11. Yeah. Bunke Smith was there. Yeah. You know? I was so shocked because I was just like, dog, I want to do a studio session with you guys. I want to mix the hip hop and the skija. I even have a name for it now. Yeah. Skij Hop. Yes. Skij Hop. Exactly. You heard it here first. Went, uh, <laughs> are you, are you going to show us a little bit of your vocals there on the piano song? Because you know, McLaren's got a young, you know, yes. vibrato yana happening. Uh, vibrato yana. Huh? <laughs> you be singing on tracks. What's the track you have with that girl? That's black and white. Ah, the whole track is brother. black and white. What's the girl that you guys were, you were hitting? Dog, I used to with? I used to sell drugs and sing to my crush the next day at school. You of know course. what I used to sing? <laughs> if I wrote you a symphony, yes. You want to? That's another thing <laughs> that I'm trying taste. to teach dudes. You need yeah. to. You will get shot by singing dudes in America. Why do we in South Africa think, uh, you know, saying niggas are soft or something? <laughs> something so Soweto might not have an AK voice. <laughs> <laughs> he might rob you, but like in, he's uh, from Soweto. <laughs> just with a very soft voice. Let's see, phone. Let's exactly. Oh, wow. We are born in King, one way I feel. One tattling dog. Oh no, completely <laughs> going off. But you know what? I'm excited to see where your music is going to take us. Yeah. Where, how else you're going to explore and do different things? And I like the fact that you are trying to explore and 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 mix up a piano with a little bit of ski show because we need people to also know that you can't stick in this box of hip hop. Um, you're a creative. You're an artist. You're allowed to kind of expand yourself and see what other places you can be in. You know what I mean? Would you ever find yourself doing maybe say like a like a like a house feature or? Yes, I have a piano song with Tebe. 
Tebe from Matlera. I hear Tebe now on all the roads to go Matlera. No, but no, but Tebe. Who te- te- No, but Tebe is also like Sipo. He's also uh, half Kosa, half Tswana, half Unali Busuti. Son of the soil. Same with me. <laughs> Son of the soil. <laughs> same with me. My my, my, my father is half Soto, half Zulu. My mom's is half Tswana, half Kosa. You on Kasi confirm. Yes. You cannot better join Tebe Rebecca Molo because I'm going to make a pass at <laughs> hey, I'm <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Here up, and I know she don't mess with him also. Uh, uh, shout out to the OG Rebecca Malope. She one of the hardest. You know that fade. You ain't never seen it that perfect anywhere else. Also. Thirty years, never, it's never went Come left or right. <laughs> Come on, I took it as I took it now. It just is. <laughs> Oh man, we'd love to sit and you know just chat a little bit more, but of course we are, uh, you know, having to let the man go because Slick has been waiting long and Me hard. Me and Slick and have a date because I'm single now. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. when you guys are when you guys are done having your little date, then you guys can give us more music because we want Champion Music Three, but also we want Diaspora Two. We want more albums. We want more music. We want you to just keep on giving us more because I think a lot of hip hop is appreciating the man you are right now, For but sure. also the man that you could be because you seem For to sure. be growing as time goes on and you. Give us a little bit more of yourself and more sure. grace. Huh? Thank you so much for having me. Man. Absolutely, yeah. man. Love, love, love everything that's happening for you and wish you all the best. Next time we talk here, yeah, I know the conversations will be elevated. The experiences will be more, you know, touched more countries beyond Sadek. Ne- uh, next time we get like about the rapper and Katubu Moses. Yeah. Katubu Moses. Yeah. And, yes. maybe, and maybe we'll have so cars. You know that, what? That, that, <laughs> that's a young, you know, I'm already telling you guys what the next hour is about. Okay. Come on. Okay. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Well, look out for it. Gospel Gold, my clever dog boy. <laughs> In the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> no cap. The next album, yeah. mad opera, mad choral sounds. Nice. Um, very much saying we are still God. You know, I'm saying that. I, I was saying this to my friend who is a, a, a guide and also helps me a lot with like just cleansing and my life and whatnot. And I was like, dog, the Bible is in the hood. Hey, yeah. just put put. Uh, uh, who's that guy who betrayed Jesus? Judas. Judas. Hey, Judas. Judas one thing. <laughs> Judas was the home he was trying to be in every picture. Yeah. Look at the paintings. Yeah. He's on Jesus' neck, dog. It's like, yeah. relax. I'm like, but, uh, so I'm like, my mother also is a very uh, gifted person. Yeah. She has a gift. My mother touches people and prays and things nice. really happen. You know, whenever I go to Matlera, if you're my friend, I take you to my house when we leave and my mother will pray until I end. All of that is a part of my music. But right now, it's festive. I'm about to give you guys something very jiggy. But it's still got consciousness to it, you know? I, I think I'm, I'm deciding the name. But I think I want to tell you guys what I think I want to call it. I want to call it Adam's Theory. Cause the Adam's nig- Theory. The hood nigga is what Adam is now. Uh, these are exclusives right mm-hmm. nice. well, and I love have the name. It flows. It has something to it. Adam's yeah, Theory. The diaspora, Adam's Theory. And then the last one is called... And then the one for next year, the big album, the one I'm seeing has all those choral elements and all of the boys are pulling up on me, you know, so I'm excited. Like Nasty recently we even spoke. I can't wait to see if he's even going to be on Brian Nubia because he's a God level rapper. That is what, that's my best album to date. That's the album I was talking about. Diaspora was yeah. a quick decision to say, aha, I don't think they read. Let me just hit them with a pop quickly, but a high level one, you yeah. know, no disrespect to it. Still, yeah. I, I put my life into that thing, you know, but the album is there. It's waiting. Literally just four verses and then it's done. So Adam's Theory, Diaspora, Adam's Theory, Brian Nubia. That's the album series. Got it. That's beautiful, man. You heard it here for the first time on Pop Radio. And uh, Maglera, we are going to say thank you so much for your time. Um, we're going to look for you during the festive because I want to see you on all of the stages, all of the crates, all yes. of the everything. <laughs> You're going to be in the trenches and in the biggest let's festival go. stages as well. Let, let's go to Maglera. You guys must come. Please, no, please come. invite what us. Yeah. Good fellas? Or we're just going straight into the hood? No, no, no. Uh, obviously, fellas, hangover next day. Can I go more to the hood? Oh, why? Stuff's out on us. Yeah, yeah. And then we got a bone. We will talk up on a little lead lag. Plus, a lead lag, I know. How are you born? I'm going to go off. The battery to call it which is a hempy throat. So you heard it, of course. Popcast goes to Maclera. For That's sure. where we're we going. Go. All sure. right? Please. So you can catch us out there. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Oh, Absolutely. Like, comment, subscribe, share this content. This is Pop Radio. We out.